In Islam, we are taught to dress modestly. We are taught to dress modestly. This modest dressing is not just for the females. It is for the males as well. And we are taught to be of high character, conduct, values, and so on. This modest dress is supposed to calm us. It is supposed to bring about a sense of peace, a sense of equality. Whether you are rich or poor, whether you are fair or dark in complexion, Allah loves you. Remember that. And Allah loves you. An unmatched love. It's up to you to reciprocate that. Remember my words. Allah loves you. But do you love Allah? That's the question. People say Allah doesn't love me. If someone says that, it's because they don't love Allah. That's the reason. Allah loves you. Do you love Allah? If the answer is yes, how can you give up your prayer? How can you start exposing yourself? I remember someone asked me a question. And I'm taking the liberty of answering it here because I think it's absolutely important. Why would Allah judge? This was the question, right? Why would Allah judge you based on your dress? Why do I need to cover my hair or my legs? Why would Allah actually judge me based on whether my legs are covered or my hair is covered? You see, these are the questions of today. So I said, for the same reason that he would judge you if you prayed or not, if you stole or not, if you did anything else or not. These are rules and regulations. You call yourself a Muslim. What is the meaning of a Muslim? Islam is generally interpreted in two different ways. Coming from East Islam, which means to surrender and to submit. Surrender. Who surrendered? Anyone who wants to call themselves Muslim, it means they have surrendered. If they don't want to surrender, well, stop calling yourself a Muslim. But today they want to say, I'm a Muslim and I won't surrender. It's a different thing if you have a weakness. If you're weak and you know that, look, I'm supposed to be doing this, but I'm weak. Oh Allah, forgive me. Then you're a sinful person, perhaps, or you are struggling to do the right thing. But if you are a defiant person and you say, I'm a Muslim, but who says alcohol is haram? I'm a Muslim. Who says gambling is haram? I'm a Muslim who says adultery is haram. If that's the case, please, you can do what you want because you are answerable to Allah, but don't call yourself a Muslim because you have not submitted to Allah and you want to change the deen. That's what people are trying to do today. They want to change the deen in a way that they will bring about things that are not in the deen into the deen and say it's the deen. And they want to remove things from the deen and say that's the deen. And if you are sticking to the straight and narrow, they will call you an extremist perhaps. May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. We need to develop ourselves. I cannot shove down your throat anything. I can only encourage you. And if you see me doing wrong, you can encourage me. And even if you don't see me doing something wrong, it's your duty to, to tell me, to encourage me, to remind me. Alhamdulillah. So people are doing things that are unacceptable and saying they are part of Islam. I was saying that there are two things. One is to submit and two is Peace. I'm sure we've all heard Islam means peace. You heard that? Islam means peace. And others will say Islam means to submit and surrender. The reality is it means both of them. You submit and surrender and you will achieve peace. No submission, no surrender, no achievement of peace. What does that mean? Allah has come with a recipe. He's given it to us through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's amazing. It's unique. It's something that is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what do we do? We know it. We read it, we hear it, but we couldn't really be bothered. And we're still searching for peace. We're still searching for peace. Subhanallah. The peace is there. Fulfill your prayer. Wallahi, I promise you, my brothers and sisters. And this is a challenge for myself and yourselves. I promise you and I challenge you. Get up for Salatul Fajr early, early. Considering it an honor. Try it. Consider it an honor. Set your clock 4.30, for example. And you know salah perhaps will only be at quarter past five in the masjid or I don't need to read salah up to just before sunrise. One might argue and they might say that. But the challenge is to get up early. Get up really early for the sake of your maker. I love him. I'm going to get up at 4.30 for him. I love him. I'm going to get up at 4.30. And you know what? He tells us the rules and regulations I have stipulated for you are actually for your benefit. 
I don't want from you anything. مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ I don't want from them any sustenance. I don't want anything from them. Nor do I want them to feed me. It's not about materialism. Allah says, I don't need your wealth. I don't need that particular food. In fact, إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ Allah says, indeed, it is Allah who is the provider, the all-powerful. It is Allah who is the provider. He will provide for you. Develop a link with Him. Become friends with Him. Get close to Him. How? I will get up early for Salatul Fajr. I will make wudu. I will cleanse myself. And I will stand up in prayer, considering it an honor. Wallahi, I promise you, you will achieve peace in your heart for the rest of that day. Wallahi. Have, have we felt that? Have we felt it? I, I hear quite a few yeses, but we want to hear a few more yeses as well in the future. You get up for the sake of Allah. If you are ready to get up even before that and read Salatul Tahajjud or at least make dua to Allah, pray, supplicate to Him at that time of the morning, you will achieve a lot of peace, a lot of comfort. Even though you will have challenges, by the way, who on earth does not have challenges? Who does not have difficulties? We think that we are on earth and life is supposed to be rosy. No way. Even a rose has thorns. You know that? So if your life is supposed to be rosy, well, I might say, okay, it is. But these two, three things are just the thorns in the path. So what you have to do, make the most of the smell, the scent, mashallah, the rose, enjoy what it looks like. But once in a while, you might be injured. There might be a little bit of blood here. What I mean is, things may not happen exactly the way you want it. Not everything can be smooth as you wish and as you want. Subhanallah. But what you do need to know is, life will be full of tests from the beginning to the end. And Allah says that. You were created to be tested. That's all. So what happens in a test? You have questions that are difficult. They cannot be easy all the time. You have situations to resolve that will not be so easy. They will be difficult. But Allah says, spend a few more years there and inshallah you will get contentment. The Prophet says, the affairs of a true believer are amazing. They are strange in a unique, beautiful, positive way. Why? Because when something good happens, then a believer is thankful. So it's better for that believer. And when something bad happens to them, they bear patience. They are still content. They surrender to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they are still happy many of us we're not happy with the decree of Allah Allah chose that you will have this you say no I don't want it well you're not going to be able to change it that's Allah if he gave you hair in a certain way a face in a certain way if he gave you a complexion in a certain way that's his choice you cannot say I'm upset with Allah Allah chose your parents for you there is nothing you're going to be able to do about changing that zero that's something, in fact, you cannot even change. Iqra kitab Allah tarq jinanahu wa tanal azim al-ajri wal-ghufrani Rattil hurawi al-qalb min nafahatihi كالماء يروي لهفة العطشان